How's it everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Hawaiian Horology. Today we're going to be doing a long overdue state of the collection here. I'm going to be going over some of my favorite pieces, why I got them, some little backstories behind each one. But the reason why I'm doing this in mid-2024, because I feel like all of this is going to change. I just feel like refreshing my collection. There's a couple of keepers, a couple that I may move on from, and I'll just tell you what I'm eyeing up in the future. So here we go. So here's the first uh, luxury watch that I did get, the Rolex Explorer 39mm. This is uh, going to be a keeper in the collection. If you can see this scratch right here, uh, that's the first scratch I ever got it, and I'll never forget it. I got it at Disneyland. I banged it against the boat on the Jungle Cruise. And it's just something that I'll never forget. It was my first watch, my first scratch, and I'm just like, oh my goodness. It didn't really ruin my day, but every time I did look at the time, I actually probably didn't even look at the time. I was looking at the scratch the whole time. But this is uh, just a fond memory that I have of this watch. I'm sure everybody has memories like this about certain watches. Some of my other watches that have scratches on it, I have no clue. But this one right here, I will never forget. And I don't think I'll ever be parting with this uh, Rolex Explorer 39. And next in the collection, we have the Rolex Explorer 2. One of the more robust watches in the collection that is versatile but it is a little bit more toolish for that kind of dressed up uh, vibe here but it is perfect it has um, the functions that you need time date it has it's supposed to be the am pm indicator but of course we just use it as a gmt one of the um one of the more odd uh pieces in rolex's lineup which i absolutely love i don't think they're going to get any more interesting well maybe they got the left-handed uh, gmt now but this is one of the more um out there pieces i believe for rolex and i really do love it this may go this may stay who knows and on to the first micro brand of the collection the monta ocean king version 3 with their new patented uh, 120 click bezel very nice very crispy i do feel like just like seiko just like uh, G-Shock. There will always be a Monta in my collection because I'm a huge fan of the brand. Just I have a couple of things about it that I do talk about in my other videos about the the brand. They did just come out with a new uh, Monta Noble Voyager, which I don't really like the design of it. It just looks like the Noble, but they have a GMT hand, which is kind of like a skeleton hand, which I don't think it really fits that well with a type of watch. It looks too dressy to have a skeleton hand like that, but if you like it, go ahead and pick it up. They're doing pre-orders now, and then it's going to raise a couple hundred bucks for the full price watch, but um, I'm not sure if this is always going to be the Monta in my collection. I may move on from it if they do come out with a piece that I like, but uh, this is a perfect watch for any collection. And next, we're going on to the second micro brand in the collection, the Formix Essence 39 Malachite Dial. I do really appreciate the dial. I think it is very, very handsome, very beautiful. But unfortunately, this 39 millimeter watch just feels and wears a little too small on my wrist. So this uh, will probably be on the chopping block. I do have a couple other pieces in mind that I do kind of need funds for. So this one is probably gonna go. The next watch in the collection is a PRX Damien Lillard Special Edition in gold and black. I really, really do enjoy this piece, but it doesn't get that much wrist time, but I don't think I will be moving on. I have been receiving a lot of comments about this uh, Damon and Lillard uh, logo on the second hand, but you know what? I have to make it like for him. If it was a little bit smaller, it would be okay. I don't know if they, um, you know, they, they may have done something else with the dial. Let, let's say this symbol was kind of like etched in the background of the dial it would be kind of like too much and if it didn't have it it would just be like kind of like a regular prx so i believe they did it in a very uh very nice way and i do really enjoy this watch still and it will be sticking around and next we have the tudor black bay 41 burgundy bezel meta certified and this watch i made a few videos about it before Actually, I kind of think I made a kind of a lot of videos about it, just because I like it so much, and I feel like, like I was talking about earlier, 
like Casio, like Seiko, like Manta, there should always be a tutor in uh, my collection. There should always be a tutor in everybody's collection because I think they make quality watches and they're kind of standing on their own. They're not the little brother, little sister of Rolex. They are kind of paving their own way. And I am very interested in a couple of pieces, the Pelagos FXD and uh, maybe the monochrome one. But I do think this burgundy bezel with the gilt accents is a very, a very interesting watch with the Jubilee. It just adds more, more pizzazz to this piece. And I really think it's going to stay unless something else can replace it. I was also interested in the Alinghi uh, FXD, but, but to be honest, I'm not exactly sure if I'm a person. Actually, I know that I don't really like having fabric straps on watches. I don't like the way it wears. I kind of don't like the way it feels. I do really like the way that it looks in photos when it's kind of lying down like this. But when it's on my wrist and let's say you have to have it kind of tighter and it kind of squeezes in your wrist like that i really don't like that um that feeling on the wrist i think it's a good idea but it doesn't really uh, fit my fit how i like to wear watches i like to wear them a little bit loose i don't really like it tight at all so maybe the fxd is not for me but i do think maybe the pelagos 39 might be a too small watch so I'm going to wait and see what they come up with in the future and I will let you guys know if I do upgrade or change out the tutor in my collection. And on to one of the newest pieces in my collection, the Bell and Ross BRX5 in baby blue with the matching baby blue rubber strap that feels wonderful on the wrist. Uh, this is, has the Kinesi movement in it, uh, 70 hours of power reserve, power reserve indicator with the date that displays three of the things it's I, I it may be divisive to some but i just think it adds a lot more you know different elements to the dial if you just you know if you have a look at all these dials it's kind of they're kind of playing nothing else besides a date you know maybe numerals here three six and nine but this just adds a new element it makes it more interesting it's a watch that i really really like um I, yeah, this is my newest watch, or, well, it's not my newest watch. I bought one after this, and I'll show you guys in a little bit. But this is one of the newest watches in my collection, and I feel like this is going to be a keeper for a very, very long time, unless maybe I swap it out with another Bell & Ross. But to me, in their collection, this BRX5, even with the side of the case and the way that the crown guards look with this, I don't know how to describe it, with this kind of, like, hollow part it's very interesting it's a very nice wear to be honest more people have talked to me about this watch than any other watch in my collection you know people was on the street they was like hey is that a bell and ross hey i never seen that i went into my rolex authorized dealer they're like hey nice watch i was like thanks man i really really like it but anyway this is going to be a keeper in the collection i'll have a review on it very very soon the brx5 in baby blue and next we're going on to a couple of heavy hitters in my collection. Well, heavy hitters for my collection, the uh, Starbucks and the Batgirl. Uh, I think these two watches are kind of perfect, uh, perfect size, perfect dimensions. I really do appreciate this watch and um, I like the sizing. I like the feel. I love the Jubilee. Like you guys know, I'm a huge Jubilee fan. And actually uh, for my collection, there already has been some major changes this year i sold uh, my beloved uh, white sky dweller on jubilee and this was one of the main reasons why i sold the sky dweller after getting my hands on this and wearing this for a while i did feel like the sky dweller was too big it was too chunky and this one did everything that the sky dweller could do except for of course it doesn't have a annual calendar but i just found myself reaching for this just because of the size and because of the weight so I decided to move on from the Sky Dweller. And this is of course the quintessential dive watch that, uh, you know, if you can have one of these, maybe the no date version, which I had earlier. Uh, but uh, I think the green looks great. I really, really wish they would go back to an all green dial. So maybe this one might be on the block and I can just wait until hopefully they come up with another green bezel because that's what really made the Hulk really something special is that green bezel 
excuse me, that green dial. This one looks a little more, you know, kind of regular, but I still do really love it in my collection. I really wanted this watch for so long and I finally got it. So, and just to mention one other piece that I moved on from my collection this year already was the green dial Datejust 41. Great piece, but I just kind of decided to move on from it. Uh, and so these might stay, this one might go, definitely this one's gonna stay until maybe something can replace it. Uh, maybe if I get a Pepsi. I did really want the green GMT, but now I'm thinking that one looks kind of weird. Uh, but uh, if I get one, maybe I'll decide between this one and that one. And here it is, my newest piece in the collection, the White Omega Speedmaster. I made a few videos about this before, but I am going to have a full review on this piece coming up very, very soon. I just think uh, this is a great watch. I really enjoy it for now. This is probably one of the pieces that is going to be a mainstay in the collection. Uh, 42 millimeters, great bracelet, good clasp, great movement. This one, let's test it out after my little snafu uh, that the uh, chronograph wasn't resetting. Let's see, let's see, come on, fingers crossed. Boom, all right, it works. So here it is, the whole collection laid out. Uh, like I said, the reason why I wanted to make this uh, video was to uh, just show my collection here because I wanted to kind of make a make a note of it kind of for me because I mean over the years I've had I bought and sold a lot of different watches and I wish I kind of started this YouTube channel earlier just so I could kind of go back and remember what watches I did have because a lot of my collection goes in and out uh, I do have one watch on the way that I am going to sell one two three watches for uh, just to make room for that piece but um, I feel like this one is for sure keeper, this one is a keeper, and this one is a keeper. Other than that, um, these two might be keepers as well. Like I said, I do really hope that they come out with a, with a green dial version, but who knows, they may never do that, and I may just, just have this one forever here. But um, this is a collection. They, most of it is going uh, back into the safe deposit box. I only really like to have like one or two out at a time and it really helps me like appreciate the watches that i do have because i don't have everything if i had everything out then i would be just wearing uh, one watch a day or they'll just be sitting uh, in the box you know they may get kind of lonely <laughs> but anyway here's the collection let me know what you think about it let me know what pieces you think i should add what pieces you think i should move on from and uh, let me know what you have in your collection. But thanks again for watching another episode of Hawaiian Horology. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Shoots.